Let's go over the entirety of Calculus 3, Multivariable Calculus. Let's get started. Multivariable Functions In 2D, functions take in an x input and output a certain value. On the other hand, multivariable functions take in multiple inputs and output a certain value. For example, in 3D, functions take in an x and y value and output a z value. When we map all these values out, instead of ending up with a graph like we do in 2D, we end up with a surface in space. All these x and y values have corresponding z values, which creates this shape. Contour maps. Another way to look at these surfaces is through contour maps. This is a top view of the surface, and it gives information on the height, the z value, of our function at certain points. The contours are usually labeled with the z values corresponding to those points. It's also worth noting that the closer these contours are to each other, the steeper the slope is between them. These contour maps are also actually common in topographic maps. For example, this is a contour map of Mount Everest. Pretty cool, right? Partial derivatives. Normally, when we take derivatives, there's only one variable in our function. We have to use partial derivatives to differentiate multivariable functions. This way, we can still apply the differentiation rules we learned before. They're denoted like this, with a rounded d. This method is done by differentiating the function with respect to one variable while holding the others constant. For example, this function which takes x and y as its inputs, can be differentiated with respect to x, meaning I take the variable y as constant, or with respect to y, meaning I take the variable x as constant. We then apply the usual differentiation rules to obtain the derivative. Higher order derivatives can be differentiated with respect to the same variable or another one of the variables, known as a mixed partial derivative. This is a key skill for Calculus 3. Directional derivatives. Since we work with 3D surfaces in multivariable calculus, it's safe to say that the slope of the function at any certain point depends on its direction. For example, if we go in this direction, the slope is negative, whereas going in this direction, the slope is positive, all at the same point. This encapsulates the idea of directional derivatives. It's the rate of change of a function at any particular point with a fixed direction. A common denotation of the directional derivative is like this, where the left-hand side says the directional derivative of the function f in the direction u and the right-hand side is the gradient of f dot the unit vector u. Double and triple integrals. Double integrals are what we use to obtain volumes under a surface. It is evaluated by first taking the inner definite integral, then the outer definite integral. Similarly, the triple integral helps us integrate over a three-dimensional region and is evaluated almost the same way as a double integral. It's worth noting that the order of integration is interchangeable, and you would still obtain the same value. These tools are powerful and significant, as they have many applications. For example, in electromagnetic physics, to calculate for the enclosed current in Ampere's law, one would need to use double integrals. Change of variables and the Jacobian. The Jacobian is a matrix made up of partial derivatives, and it's an important tool to change the variables of a function. For example, if I want to use double integrals to take the area of a disk in Cartesian coordinates, it would be a little difficult. It would actually be easier to do this in polar coordinates. 
the determinant of the Jacobian would act as a scaling factor to change my double integral in Cartesian coordinates to a double integral in polar coordinates. Now remember, these double integrals both evaluate the same shape, the disk. They're just mapped out differently now, one in Cartesian and one in polar coordinates. Vector fields. Vectors are quantities with both magnitude and direction. A vector field is the assignment of a vector to each point in space. This field is visualized as a bunch of arrows, each with its own magnitude and direction. For example, at this point, there exists a vector that has a certain magnitude going in this direction. Vector fields have a few important properties. First, the divergence of a vector field is an operator that measures how much a field spreads out from a point. Next, the curl of a vector field is another operator that measures the rotation about the point. Again, vector fields are very useful. For example, if we want to map out the gravitational field at every point in a certain region, we can use vector fields. Line integrals. Line integrals deal with integrating a function along a curve. Imagine walking along a hilly path and adding up all the elevations. This is conceptually similar to a line integral. Line integrals are crucial for problems involving fields like electric and magnetic fields or fluid flow. For a scalar function, f of x, y, z, along a curve c, the line integral is given by this expression. Here, ds is a differential arc length along the curve. So for example, if you're considering the temperature distribution along a metal rod bent into a curve, the line integral divided by the length of the rod would give you the average temperature of the rod. And that's it. Again, some details were left out. But if you thought Calculus 3 could have been mastered in this short video, then you're absolutely nuts.